everyone. How are you? Thank you for coming back to watch. Uh, my name is Judy and I'm the host of this podcast called The Autumn Acorn Knits and I'm so happy that you decided to join me again. I really appreciate you taking the time to spend time with me. Um, I also really appreciate the positive wonderful feedback that you gave me after the last one. So the first one got through that. So here I am. Number two. Ah. Um, so yeah, thank you. Welcome. Um, my, like I said, my name is Judy. Um, if you would like to find me, we have a Facebook group called The Autumn Acorn Knits. Just, uh, if you just search for that on Facebook and ask to be, um, admitted or whatever the word is accepted I will happily accept you and um, also my Instagram I have an Instagram name and that is Judy Jewel underscore no spaces um, I am filming from New Hampshire in our guest cottage and it's being yarn bombed and I do promise I will show you some of that progress, some progress photos. Uh, if I can figure it out, I'll try to s insert one here, but I'm not sure I can do that. I'll try. So why don't we get started? I think we'll start with some of my uh, things that I have finished. So I do have some finished projects. Not a lot though, but a few things. So the socks that I was working on out of the Patton's Croy I showed you last week are finished. Um, these are for Joe. His birthday is coming right up next week, September 20th, so I think that's next week. So these I'm going to give to him. Um, here they are, finished. There's two of them. And I've been talking about how I can't seem to get my socks to match. These came really close. Really close. The only area that they're not the same is the toe. So, you see this one has a little more gray on the tip, but hey, you know what? I was close. I was pretty happy with these. I do think what I did was, I don't know if you remember the last time I said that the, the top of the sock had a different um, material. It was a bit looser than the bottom and a bit wider. I think I used a different size needle for the top. So I hope they fit him. I really, really do. I want to surprise him. He has no idea that I made these, but um, I think he'll like them. I think he'll be surprised. I hope they fit. And I also finished for Joe hat. Um, ever since I met Joe, I have been trying to make him a hat that fits him. So the first time it was way too small. The second time it was way too small. The third hat was too big. So we tried to shrink it, felt it, put it in the machine. <laughs> and when we took it out, it was so tiny. It was like a little tiny hat. So poor Joe has never gotten a hat that actually fits him. So I thought I would try this one. I do not, let's see. I don't think I have the pattern with me, but it was a basic, what was it called? A scrappy hat or something? And it was, the one pictured was all in different colors and I just, he likes black. Black's his favorite, so here it is. Um, there's the top where the gathers are. And yeah. So I really am hopeful that this one will fit him. I used Patton's Croy for this as well in their charcoal sure yeah they're I'm sorry coal colorway and 75% washable wool 25% nylon um, it took 
all of 50 grams for 1.75 ounces. And this is a four ply sock yarn. So I'm hoping it fits. I'm not sure. I honestly don't know. If it doesn't, I'll just keep trying until I get one that actually fits the guy. He doesn't have a very large head. It's not that his head, it's, it's my fault. I'm just not, not doing it right. So anyway, and um, these are being housed in my sweet little mushroom toadstool bag with the amazing acorn progress keeper. Love that so much. So yeah, those are finished. Oh, I also have, my goodness, would you look at this sweet, sweet, sweet bag, Annie of Green Gables. Oh, I love it so much. I really love this. It's a little jawstring that I don't remember if I showed it to you uh, last week or not, but I got it. Where did I get it? I'm not even sure. No, I don't think I did show you this last week. No, I didn't. This was by Done By Hand Studio. Again, I just love, love that shop. And Stephanie May is her name. The, the little the shop owner and she sent me how sweet is this look at that all of these little stitch markers that uh, that go along with the progress bag and I just adore them they're so 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 sweet they're all sort of related like a little eh, it's hard to tell it's a little dress a woman in a dress. Um, let's see. This one is like an old phonograph. Yeah. There you go. It's hard to see, but you get the idea. Um, what else do we have? A bonnet. A bonnet. So sweet. Anyway, there were a lot of them. There's a clock tower and a little comb. And I just thought these were so sweet. So thankful. Thankful to Stephanie from Done by Hand Studio for sending me those sweet extras. Anyway. So I decided to make, I, I had mentioned um, in my last podcast that my daughter Kelly is expecting a baby like any minute, any minute. Um, we thought that she might be going into labor this morning, uh, but it was a false alarm, but we had already packed the entire car and were ready to go. I mean, we were just ready. And the doctor said, no, nope, yes, you can go home. So she went out to shop for mums. So anyway, she's having a little girl any, any day na now and I decided to make the baby a little bonnet. This is the pattern. It's called, and I'm going to have a tough time with this because I think it's in French, but Begin de Primtemps. Yeah. Little Lily Lily Call Me Tout is who wrote the pattern. But here's a picture. It's just like a bonnet, really, really pretty bonnet with an eye cord, with eye cord ties and little eyelets and um, really cute. So anyway, I decided to make it in the six to nine month size because I'm just thinking that, you know, babies' heads, when they're newborns, they don't stay little for very long and I thought she would get more wear out of it if, if I made it a little bigger. And it took, called for 77 yards of a DK weight yarn. And so I ended up using Baraco Corsica, which is 90% cotton, 10% cashmere. So it's really, really soft. And I'm not sure what size of the needle did I use. Uh, uh, U.S. 
four, 3.5 millimeter was the needle size. So I think it came out pretty sweet. Here it is. Now I still have to decide, there's the little, little eye cord. And I like the, I really, really like the little, the stitch pattern that it has. And there's the back. It's got a nice spiral gather for the, for the back. Um, and then the, the front here, honestly, I don't think I did it correctly. It's just folded over. I haven't blocked this. But here's, you could see it if it's when it's not folded over. Um, I can almost picture like a ribbon going through this. But I thought I would let my daughter decide if she wanted me to just leave it rolled back or I could tack it back. So I'm going to let her decide, but it's pretty cute, right? That took me no more than, I think, maybe two hours. I spent an afternoon working on that. It was really fun. So I will give her that when the baby gets here. Um, so th yeah, those are the three things that I finished. Well, actually, I guess this would be considered a work in progress, but I actually finished this a while ago and then went to sew it together. At, I'm having a hard time figuring it out. Um, I have not made very many sweaters in my knitting life, crocheting life, but I saw this one and I just fell in love with it. It's called the San Francisco Coat by Be Sweet. The pattern is, ugh, I forgot my glasses, Barter Wardle, Bardet Wardle, I hope I'm saying that right. There's a picture of it. It is so lovely. Here's another view of it from behind. So as you can tell, it's a very long cardigan. And it is made with a thick and thin or slub yarn, slub wool. Um, so let me show you. Oh, this is so exciting. I found my reading glasses. This will help a lot. Let me just, before I even show you. Yeah, Slubby Merino is what it calls for. And US 35, 19 millimeter knitting needles. Straight, I believe I use straight, straight needles. And I used, I got this on Etsy, oh, such gorgeous yarn, look at it, look at this, can you make out that, I don't know, I feel like it's getting really washed out, I mean, it's cream, it's a natural color, eh, you might even see it better farther away, so anyway, Sheepish Creations is where I got the 135 yards, very reasonable, very reasonable price, $13 for that, for 125 yards, this is a bulky or a super bulky, I believe it's a super bulky weight, so I have that skein actually left over, which is nice, because I used one, two, three, I've already used three skeins. Now I do have some, some left over here, and like I showed you, this this whole skein. So that's exciting because I can make something completely different, completely new. But let me show you where I am on this. I finished all of the pieces. Started to try to sew on the sleeves. So. It's going to be tricky to show you, I'm afraid, but I don't know. This is where one of the sleeves will go. Uh, this sleeve is on, but it, oh, I'm thinking that I'm going to have to tear the whole thing out. You can see the sleeve has a little bit of a rib at the bottom. Pretty hard to tell in this podcast, but 
and the back. So you kind of get the idea. But I just don't know. It's not feeling right to me. I'm not understanding the pattern very well as far as how to put it together. And I don't know why. I thought I would put it away for a little while and then take it back out with, you know, with fresh eyes and, and see if I could figure it out. But um, I'm really not 100% confident. And I hate to tear it out because I really want to wear it. It's getting cool enough now. It's September in New Hampshire and it's been quite cool and I would just love to wear it. I think it's such a cool, cool piece. Shaggy Baggy Totes made this for me. And Sharon is, is the shop owner's name on Etsy. I just love it. See her little tag? Shaggy Baggy. And she made this for me so that I could review it. Um, do a little little review, but oh, it's so handy. It's got these wonderful uh, burlap handles. So cool, right? I really like it a lot. So, yeah. That's that. Let's see if I can get that finished. I don't know. I'm also working on my socks. So, I'll show you where I've gotten where. So, one is one is completely finished, but it may have been finished last time. I don't remember. I'm so in love with this sock and this yarn, mainly this yarn. But but I'm happy with the sock too because it's it looks like the first sock for me that's going to fit well. Although I'm still debating on whether to go to a size zero needle. I really don't know. These seem to feel good, but. Maybe that's just because of the yarn. I don't know. But anyway, isn't that gorgeous? Just love those color changes. Love, love. So that's finished. And the second one, that's doing okay. It's in my wonderful double pointed, double pointed needle holder case with three snaps that I just don't know how I ever lived without. Really? Um, and that is by the Steady Hand. I, I buy all of my needle cozies from the Steady Hand because they have the three snaps. I think it's really helpful. Anyway, I'm just using some metal US size 2 double pointed knitting needles that I picked up at Joanne Fabric. And then there's my little progress keeper that a friend of mine, someone special to me, made years ago for me. I have quite a few from her. just love them. And I used, there's the yarn, so pretty. Oh, I have so much fun with this Zauberball, Zauber Zauberball, the crazy Zauberball by Chappelle. Just a wonderful yarn. Oh, it was expensive. I mean, it was probably $22, $23 for this 100 gram ball, but oh, so worth it now that I've knit with it and, and now that I see the results. It's just crazy beautiful yarn. Um, no, I told you last week, but if you didn't watch, it's made out of 75% sure wool or super wash wool and then polymide 75% virgin wool. I'm really confused. 75% superwash, 25% po polyamide, 75% virgin wool, 25% nylon. So that doesn't really add up to 100. I don't know what that means, but amazing yarn. If you ever get a chance to knit with a crazy zauber ball, do it. And I'm just using a plain sock pattern that I found on... Um, on Ravelry. I'm also using my Queen Bee Apothecary Lime Sugar Hard Lotion. Love that. It's really nice. So yeah, that's where I am with the socks. So I don't know. I think I have another five, five, eight rows to go before I start to do the, the heel. And I like to do a slip stitch heel to give it a little more strength. That just seems to be my favorite my favorite heel so far for this new sock 
knitter that I am trying to figure it all out but I've been told that socks don't need to match and it's okay but I've also some of you uh, viewers gave me some ideas on how to get them to match but I love that um, some of you are like it doesn't matter it's okay non-matching socks are fun don't worry about it so that is that um, what I want to make I thought it would be fun to show you a couple things that I plan to make, hope to make, really would like to make. By the way, I'm drinking uh, <clears throat> Green Mountain's Pumpkin Spice Coffee. So, so yummy. It's my absolute favorite, favorite coffee in the world. I never tire of it, but I think that's because I can only get it in the fall, so it's kind of limited, which makes it more special. So a couple things I would like to make, and I have them all ready to go. Ooh, you haven't seen this. This is a new acquisition. Look at this gorgeous bag. All with birds. Where I live, there are birds everywhere. It's bird paradise, so I just thought this was the cutest, cutest little bag. Oh, I've got my... Young Living Coconut Lime Body Butter that I talked about last time. Amazing. If you do not have some, you need to get it. And if you don't have anyone who can help you, I'll hook you up. You just talk to me and I'll, I will get that for you. Um, so yeah, this cute little bag was by an Etsy seller, Carolyn her name is, from Brightcraft. Dot Etsy dot com. She has hand knitted items, craft bags, needle cases, and patterns to knit. There's her card. Really, really happy with this bag. Um, and in it, I'm hoping to make, again, this would be for my new grandbaby, the newborn vertebrae, a free knitting pattern designed by Kelly Brooker. And I did get this one on Ravelry. Dot com and Kelly Brooker it, it her looks like her company's called Pekka Pika 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 Design Studios and here's a picture of the pattern and there's a pretty good picture of it it's just a cardigan open cardigan I don't even think there are buttons but I think it's really really sweet and it only calls for, I want to say a 50 gram ball of sock yarn. It calls for four fly fingering weight yarn, 100 grams. 100 grams. And they call for, that's interesting because they suggest that you use Malabrigo sock yarn, uh, 0.5 skein, so maybe it only takes half. 50 grams. That's what I thought originally. We'll see. Um, and it takes two, two needle sizes. They're calling for a 2.75 millimeter and a 3.25 millimeter circular needles. And I'm going to be using a U.S. size 3 and a U.S. size 4 just so I can get a larger um, cardigan. Because again, I know how quickly newborns grow and this baby will be born September so I was hoping to make it bigger so that it would fit her, you know, through the cold months. So we'll see how that turns out. Here's the yarn that I bought to make it in for her. I think it's really, really beautiful. All those shades of plum and gray and lavender. Just lovely. This is... Why do I keep taking these off? I know I'm just going to need them again. Um, Patton's Croy Socks, 4 ply, 50 grams, 1.75 ounces, super fine, fingering weight yarn, and the colorway is Brown Rose Marl, M-A-R-L, Brown Rose Marl, love it, 75% washable wool, 25% nylon, um, approximately 152 meters, or 166 yards, so I have two of those. Just because I honestly don't know, you know, it's, if it's going to take one or two. Oh, and then I'm using some just some bamboo needles that um, I used to sell in my Etsy shop. These are US-4, 
3.5 millimeter and then I bought these new just for this project some knitters pride marbles I have never used these but I love the pink um, 24 inch 60 centimeter length US 4 3.50 millimeters so I'll be using the, the US 3 and the US 4 like I mentioned um, yeah so that'll be fun I can't wait to get started on that and I have a this one has pockets which is really nice so I can fit the needles in the pocket and I don't know there's something about pockets in a project bag that I really really like and I thought this went really well with the bird bag it's a little um you see that a little bird house and it's sweet love that so there that's that oh, I forgot to put my sock in the right bag and if I don't do it now I'll forget where it is I'll be looking around for it so then I really I'm trying to keep organized this time the last thing that I wanted to show you that I would I want to make well I will make um, is and I have this in a bag that my mom was just getting rid of and I'm like you know it's got a zipper it's a nice good big size it's quilted it's probably been around a while but I thought hey this could be a project bag I'm gonna snag it so I did and it's perfect for a sweater project so I know you all know about this project this pattern because I see it everywhere but it's the featherweight cardigan yeah I'm pretty excited about this here it is Isn't that beautiful that is such a pretty pretty cardigan picture of the back a bit of the neck um, so yeah Hannah Hannah Fettig is the author of this beautiful pattern that again everybody seems to be knitting up I'm a little slow to the to the boat but I really want to wear this to Rhinebeck so I am going to make it I am not sure that it costs for a US size 6 needles in a lace weight yarn but I'm not doing that I'm doing a fingering weight and a size, um, what did I decide to do? These are fives. Yeah, size five. Size five needles. US size five. So, the yarn that I'll be using is by someone named Seven Sisters Arts. Here's their label. In their Meridian Base. And Meridian Base is 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. It comes with 463 yards or 100 grams and it's a four ply yarn and this is the color lot daydreams and oh my word I am so in love with this yarn. I caked it up yesterday um, and here's my, one of my cakes isn't that so wonderful? Look at that. Oh, I'm in love with it. So in love with it. It's full of golds and rose and pinks and cream and I have two. My first cake came out so much better than my second cake. This is my first cake and this is my second cake, but I just hope it's enough. I really hope it's enough. I asked um, when I bought this yarn. I bought it. We took a we took a mini trip to Portland, Maine, one day. I had to pick up something, a Christmas gift for my granddaughter, and it was on the way. So we're like, well, let's just, you know, go to Portland. I really wanted to check out some of the yarn shops. So we found this yarn shop called Knitwit, 
And here's the bag from Knitwit. It's a really cute name. And they give these bags out when, whenever you buy anything. This is your shopping bag, which is really fun. Um, so, yeah, I went in there. Joe had a phone call to make, so he sat in the truck, and I just took my time and browsed and the ladies were so welcoming and so nice just so so kind and you know asking me if i needed help and and so i showed them i showed the owner the um pattern i said you know i really she knew of course she knew about the featherweight she'd heard of it so i said i just i don't know if i'm going to need three skeins because three skeins let's face it that would be expensive Two would be just right. I could live with two. Three, ugh. now you're pushing it. Uh, so <clears throat> I sh she, she looked it up, she pulled it up on her iPad and she was like, no, I think you're gonna be okay with two. So let's hope, because if I'm not, I know you start from the top. It's a top down. The only thing I could think of is if it's not, if I don't have enough, is that I do the collar band in a different color. This part right here that you pick up after on both sides I could I, I don't know we'll see <laughs> I'm nervous I want this to work out so badly and I want to wear it to Rhinebeck so badly when we go to the New York sheep and wool festival uh, in October but it's the, toward the end of October the 21st and the 22nd so I what are we now September 10th today's September 10th 2017 so mm, I'm, I'm really I have about what five weeks maybe six weeks and and I'm not like I said I'm not a sweater knitter I'm it's not normally something I do but I really want to improve on it so we'll see let's hope I have high hopes high hopes so those are the things that I really want to work on um, and I know that when I finish those socks that I showed you just now, the ones for me, that I'm going to want to cast on another pair of socks immediately. I want um, to give some socks away for Christmas this year, and I, I have sock fever. There's no question about it. I just always need socks on my needles. That's it. That's what's happened to me since my first pair. So that's really fun. Let's see. So where I've been, so I told you a little bit about Portland, Maine. We had to rush, which was really a shame. Joe and I went up, and like I said, I had to pick up a gift for my granddaughter for Christmas. And Joe thought it was bigger than it is, so he was like, well, you, we can't throw it in the back because he has a truck. We can't throw it in the back because we'll be in the city and you know someone might take it. And I wasn't sure how big it was either until I got there. So we arranged um, the woman, Sarah. I said, Sarah, is it okay if we, we're going to go into Portland, which is about an hour and a half to two hours from her. She was halfway between where we are and Portland. And so I said, we'll be there around five or six after we're finished shopping and whatever. And <clears throat> we got a late start for whatever reason. I can't remember right now. We got a late start. And... So we didn't get there as early as we wanted to. We had a little trouble with the parking meter as well. So we, we, we had a, it was a tough start. And so we're checking out all these stores. We wanted to go to this really cool hot dog place. And I had some consignment stores on the list and I had three yarn shops. So it was gonna be quite a full day. The first thing we did was we went to the yarn shop, which I'm really glad because I got to take my time and I didn't have to feel rushed. So I bought those two skeins of yarn that I just showed you. And then I bought, this. these were in their clearance section, Jagger Spun. Isn't that beautiful? I love that. Yeah, I really like that one. This is a sport weight yarn, 50 grams, 100% organic wool natural and I bought three of those because the price was just so good that I couldn't I couldn't resist so I'm thinking these are going to become hats I'm not I'm not positive yet though that may have been all that I bought at that particular 
yarn shop, but I had so much fun looking around. Oh, I know, I bought the cotton as well for my granddaughter's little bonnet that I showed you. Excuse me. Um, I still feel like there was something else I bought there, but I, I can't think of it right now. So anyway, I ended up, <clears throat> because we were having such a great time, we wanted to go to this place called Jay's Oysters, and we met up with this couple. Where were they from? Iowa. Such a nice couple. Very sweet. Uh, we just started talking about grandchildren and, you know, all these different things. So time got away. So I texted Sarah and I said, Sarah, we're running late. You know, what's the latest we can meet you? And she really, she had a, like a hay delivery coming. So she really didn't have a lot of wiggle room. So we had to leave and it was sad because we had so many things we wanted to do while we were there. Um, but we didn't. So we're going to go back. We did get to go to Holy Donuts. Wow. Delicious potato donuts. Have you ever heard of those? Mm. So good. We got six because they're really expensive. I think they're at least $2 a donut. So, you know, a dozen is $24. So we got six. Um, we each got to choose three flavors. And we were disappointed. We, we ate them when we got home later that night. We tried some. We took like a bite off of each and tried them. And we really couldn't tell the difference in the taste. Like the orange tasted like the vanilla, tasted like the bacon. Um, I can't remember. Oh, and then I, I ended up getting a sugar cinnamon cinnamon one, and that one tasted fine. Like, you knew that was sugar cinnamon. And then Joe had picked out a chocolate coconut, and that one as well. You could clearly tell this is chocolate coconut. But the other four, they all tasted identical. So we were a little bummed, but they were delicious. They were yummy, and they're gluten-free, so that's really cool. So, um, yeah, we did get to go there, but then we had to rush to them. It was still fun. And then just the other day, just maybe two or three days ago, if that even, maybe it was Friday? I don't know. We went to North Conway. My fub buzz. We went to North Conway, New Hampshire, uh, to a yarn shop that I had been to once before called Nancy's Yarn Shop. Here's her sticker. Really nice woman, Nancy is. I like her very much. And again, Joe decided to head to the little shop that was next to the yarn shop because it was his thing. He loves that little shop. And of course, I went into the yarn shop and had fun looking around as well. Another, I, I love, I swear I love looking sometimes even more than shopping. And I picked up a few skeins of yarn and then the knitting needles that I needed for some other projects. That was really why I went, but how can you resist? So I picked up some Heritage Sock Yarn in pink. Such a pretty color, pink. Oh, pink is one of my favorite colors. I'd say blue, green, and pink. Those are my all-time favorites. And I haven't decided yet if these are going to become socks or just for heels, toes, and cuffs. I, I, I worry that my first thought was I would make my daughter, um, my my oldest daughter, a pair of socks for Christmas. But then I'm like, well, she has all wood floors, and I can just imagine this color getting dirty so quickly. And then I thought I would use it for myself. We have the same problem here. We have all wood floors, and it's hard to keep them clean all the time. So I'm not sure what will happen. And then I could not resist... Again, Heritage, this is Heritage Wave by Cascade Yarns. 75% superwash, merino wool, and 25% nylon, but I bought two. Oh, the color. Look how gorgeous that is. I love it. It's just blues and creams and darker blues and lighter blues and some black. Hello. Meryl just poked her head in the window. I left uh, the window open without the screen so she could come back if she wanted. Come here, sweetheart. Come on. She'll do what she wants, though, because that's what Meryl does. And the last one I'm the most excited about because it is a hand-dyed 
Yarn by Eric Eric Kania Eric Kania I can't say it. Um, the name of this space is Huasco H U A S C O sock, and again, this is a super wash hand painted super wash wool blend in just the most delightful colors. Look at that. Oh my goodness, this color I'm so attracted to. At first I said, I don't know, you know, I, I, I don't know, the fuchsia, this blue, I just wasn't really 100% convinced that this was the one for me, but I'm really glad I did get it and kind of went out of my comfort zone and just went with something that, she's gone already, she left, um, just went with something that I normally wouldn't go with. So I don't know what it's going to be. Who knows, but probably socks. So that was really, a really fun day. We had a really nice time at Nancy's Yarn Shop. And showed you that. And I showed you that. So um, the last, oh boy, I have so much. I cannot believe how much I have bought. It's kind of crazy. Oh, we went to a consignment store. I love, I love thrift shopping, consignment store. I love a deal. I really do. I just love a good deal. And these little balls of Regia were in the uh, consignment store for a buck fifty each, buck forty nine each. So I thought they would make a nice pair of socks. Why not? Three dollars. You can't go wrong. And then Knit Picks. Um, I don't think I've ever purchased from, from Knit Picks. And I decided I was going to try some of their yarn. So I had fun. I bought some Patton's Croy. Not a pretty color. Definitely socks. If not socks, baby cardigan, but probably socks. Oh, and this one I thought was so gorgeous too. Again, I love blue and green. Pretty. And this is another skein because I did buy two uh, for Joe's hat, but it seemed like it only took one so far, if it fits. And then I bought four of the, the Knit Picks Stroll Tweed. Very gorgeous color. In love with that one. I thought that would make a beautiful shawl or sweater. I hope I have enough, though. I only, I only picked up four skeins. I'm not sure. So those were some yarns that will become probably socks or shawls. And then, oh, I love this too. Boy, I'm really on a pink roll, aren't I? Beautiful. Different shades of pink in there and creams. And this is Knit Pick Stroll in their fingering, fingering weight. Hand painted, again, love that, fingering weight, 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon, 462 yards, 100 grams. So I have 200 grams and uh, what, almost a thousand or more than, no, almost a thousand yards. So this could become a shawl in my future for someone. And then the same exact yarn in this beautiful colorway with grays and cream and oh man, I do love this one as well. Um, so yeah, who knows, maybe even I could make something with both of these colors. That They look so beautiful together and oh, they're so soft. Future project, have no idea yet what they're going to be. So we went through what I finished, what I'm working on, what I want to make, what I've bought, where I've been, and now where I'm going. So I told you we want to go, or we are going, to the New York Sheep and Wool Festival the end of October in Rhinebeck. I have been once before loved it, but uh, maybe I told the story last time, I can't recall, but ended up getting there late and had about 20 to 30 minutes to look around. It was very disappointing. 
Um, this will be a long drive, but we have Joe is from New York. It's where he was born and, and raised in upstate New York, Rochester to be exact. Oh, so good. And so he um, wants to show me around and show me some other things that are um, in the Rhinebeck area. Hi, honey. Are you back again? Come here. Want to come see us? Come say hi. No. She's being shy. Come here. Come here. Over here. She doesn't want to be on camera today, so. Anyway, that's exciting. I'm really looking forward to that trip. And I'm not sure if we're going to camp overnight, stay with a friend. We do have friends that live, live there, live nearby or just make it a day trip, but I think it'd be more fun to spend the night. We'll see. Then before that, September 30th and October 1st is the Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival, which my sister and I, my sister Valerie and I used to be vendors at. She was a vendor there for many years. She would sell all of her beautiful hand felted toys, crowns, her yarns. She used to sell yarn as well in her shop and I joined along before I moved up I, I used to live in Connecticut for 47 years and before I moved up this way I would um, just come up and, and for the weekend spend the weekend with her and and we would I would vend my items my hand knits and things and buttons whatever I was selling so I did that for I want to say Maybe it was two or three years, and then it just got to be too much, and I wanted to just go and shop there instead of vending, so that's what I do now. And there's a really great, it's like a trailer, that a camper of some sort, and it's filled with yarn. Uh, it's, it's not, it's new yarn, but it's... I don't know if it's from the state sales or I, I'm not sure. Some of it does have a bit of an odor, not mothballs, but just some, you can almost tell that it's been stored, but it's like a dollar a skein. And um, before my obsession with fingering weight yarn, when I was really, really into the, the bulky, super bulky, chunky yarns, I would go there and just try to find all of that. But this year, I'm super excited to just look for those lace weights and fingering weight yarns that I can turn into things. So, dollar a skein. And it's it, I always would look for the wools because I'm just more drawn to wool than acrylic, or at least a blend. And uh, so, yeah, who knows? I could walk away with, I mean... 50 skeins, it's $50, but we'll see. Have to get there early though, because everybody goes and they, they know about this trailer. Uh, and then I can just walk around and we can pet the sheep and the goats and we can look at all the hand spun yarns and watch them spinning. And there's one vendor that sells these beautiful hand woven dishcloths. I only have three and I really want more because we use them every day, all day. And they're just getting, you could tell, I mean, I, I wash them constantly, so they're looking a little bit older, but I want to get a couple more of those. And we get, um, we go to the Maple House and get maple ice cream, maple creamies as they call them up here, and maple uh, candies and maple cotton candy and yum 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 maple is like one of my favorite things I, I'm a little bit of a snob about it I just I will not if I go to a restaurant and I want pancakes or french toast or waffles and they don't carry pure maple syrup it can be it doesn't have to be from Vermont or New Hampshire Canada but it has to be pure I'm not eating any of the other Aunt Jemima fake syrup I won't do it I'll go without so, yeah, so that's going to be really exciting. I can't wait for that. Anyway, it has been almost 50 minutes, and I don't want to keep you any longer. I hope that you've enjoyed talking with me, chatting with me, listening to me chat. Um, 
I hope you have been drinking a cup of tea or a cup of coffee with me and just feel like we're hanging out, talking, getting to know each other. I really love this and I can't wait to just keep going and build community. I just, I feel like podcasting was, was intended for that, to really get to know the community and that just delights me to no end. So, um, like I said, oh, I forgot, last week I told you about the giveaway I'm doing for the skein of Hand Spun Yarn by Heartstrings by D. There's another view of it. It's very pretty, very bright autumnal colors of orange, cream, yellow, um, almost a, a, a pinkish or a bright, bright, bright neon orange. And then I put in some acorns because I am all about the acorn and I made those. And there's some buttons and then a little postcard on the back that you can color. So yeah, I would love it if you would enter for this giveaway. All you have to do is go to the Facebook group, The Autumn Acorn Knits, and where you see the podcast link, just make a comment on there. Either just tell me that you saw the show and what you thought, or what you love to make, what you love to knit. Um, you could also go to my Instagram at Judy Jewel, so J U D Y J E W E L L underscore is my Instagram name and on that thread you'll see a thread there as well with the podcast it'll say the Autumn Acorn Knits episode one and um, just make a comment there to be entered or on this YouTube page underneath where there, where you can add comments and um, yeah I'll be doing the random number generator so if there are 50 comments I will just number them 1 through 50 and if I pick if the machine picks number 12 I'll just go to that comment whoever wrote it will be the winter winner so I plan to announce that on my next podcast you still have another week or two I really hope to be able to podcast in a, in a week but it, this will all depend on on the baby so right now everything is sort of on hold for her so it may be two weeks hope it's sooner but we'll see um, thank you thank you again for joining me and I hope that you have a wonderful next week week and a half until I see you again thank you again bye <music>